So I hemmed and I hawed over this. Um, I went over and over in my mind and in my head as to what to do or if I should even do it because I knew it would be a big commitment if I decided to continue down that road and I'm not sure I'm going to continue down that road. At the end of the video, you can kind of hear my um, <clears throat> real kind of in time response and thoughts to it. Um, I, it has grown on me a bit, but I'm not sure it's what I want. I just haven't been able to decide yet and uh, there's some other extenuating factors that maybe I'll get into a bit later. But – the question at hand was, now that 99.5% of all of my 112 scale dioramas are done to include Masterpiece uh, Transformers, should I go and do some of the detolfs at the 1.6 scale? And honestly, it was the collection critiques that largely convinced me to do it because um, as I began looking at those collection critiques, I began thinking to myself like, huh, um... I agree with JISC that one of the problems of the DTOF is the glass in the back um, and having the walls come through. You know, and some people have blacked them out with uh, felt or cloth or a sheet, and I don't think that's entirely effective. Um, so I was like, well, let me try some diorama stuff, you know. And uh, that's exactly what we did. Laura actually was a huge part of convincing me to do it because it was uh, – <clears throat> she was basically like, look, we do it. And it's not – you know, we, we enjoy doing it anyway. We'll rip it out if it doesn't work and probably be able to sell it you know, or donate it or have an auction or do some sort of gift on Patreon. Speaking of Patreon, um, all of these videos that you're seeing here are sped up 8 to 20 times. Uh, the full length tutorials where I tell you how to do it and what to do and the measurements and the tools and all that kind of stuff is all on Patreon at the five dollar level, which also gets you sit down Saturday, uncut dummies and a bunch of other stuff. Um, but I like to do these as kind of like just overviews and talk about the process and kind of show off a bit, you know, um, and maybe inspire hopefully people to do some some stuff with their displays. But it's, it's, it, was a, it was a long road of stuff for this one. I actually started this one in September, and after I built it, I uh, <clears throat> got a couple layers of, of paint on it, of just the black paint, and I let it sit you know, until it's now February. Uh, so from September last year to February of this year because the, the premise or the idea of doing all of these de detalls I think became exhausting to me. And I just wasn't in the mood to do it. This stuff right here, I think, was a part of it. Uh, these lines, the, the the wall in the interrogation room in the dark night, which I, I hope by now you guys know that that's what we're doing here um, from pictures on the thumbnail, hopefully. But the wall here is a very specific wall, and it's a very iconic wall, and it has a very specific pattern to the tiles that are on it. It's um, you know long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short. And then alternating at the at the row before, and <clears throat> even though it was just one, uh, you know, foam panel, let me tell you something: it was nauseating work, nauseating work, um, very very tedious and time consuming, and you had to be very methodical in doing it. And I screwed up a few here and there, but there it's kind of hard to tell. There is some leeway. What I'm doing here is using this hot knife. Um, it's past it now, but like. My hot knife, I should probably invest in a proper one, but it's not adjustable. The heat is not adjustable. So as it's plugged in, it just warms up till it hits its max. Um, but the max heat is too much for this foam to handle. So what's the, uh, what I had to do is sit near an electrical outlet, um, work until it gets too hot or catch it before it gets too hot, really. Unplug it continue working, plug it back in, monitor it till it gets too hot, unplug it and, um, and rinse and repeat. And it was a, uh, it was a, uh, it was nauseating. I so said, best way I know how to describe it, like I was sick to my stomach with just keeping track of all of the lines and uh, line work. Um, I wear a, a N95 <clears throat> while I'm um, doing that stuff, heating up styrofoam or using an airbrush because uh, uh, some of the fumes are kind of toxic. So I, um, I do that, and I suggest you do the same. That's that's one thing I'll pass on. Um, and N95s are kind of more uh, more prevalent today than they were, you know, a couple of years ago. You can, they're easily found, I feel like. Um, but then, uh, so the painting process, aside from the base coats, uh, the painting process we did in two days, a weekend, uh, our anniversary weekend. Uh, you know, who says romance is dead? Um, 
but we do enjoy doing this stuff together. And I recommend, um, you know, if your significant other is at all crafty, like it is something that's like, uh, you know, my wife doesn't really care about this stuff, but she just enjoys working on a little project. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <clears throat> it's a, uh, if, if you're lucky enough, you know, give it a shot or, you know, something to do together as a couple is always good. But um, it started to take shape, you know, and I think I started to get a little nervous. And my, the last, one of the last things I want to say here is about the display and putting it in the display. So I'm going to continue to do more um, at this point, I've decided, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to do all of them or do them offset from one another, almost like a checkerboard, where if I do, you know, the top left, then I do the middle right, and then the lower middle left, and then the bottom right. So like the, you know, the black squares or the white squares, whichever squares you'd like, are the alternating ones would be with dioramas and the other ones wouldn't. I think I'm going to try that first, and then move away from that if I think it's worthwhile to continue doing them and fill up the whole thing. I think that one thing I've learned about these with DTOFs <clears throat> is that they need to kind of be simple, um, which is a challenge because you want to give everything like a unique identity, um, but you also don't want it to get complicated and you don't want it to be distracting and you really want the figure, specifically one six scale, because there's so much more room for detail. There's so much more room for, um, you know, just all of the nuance that goes into the accessories and everything that you really want that to take precedence. So you don't want the diorama to ever be distracting. And I, I think that that's going to be a challenge. But, you know, I enjoy a good challenge and uh, I'll pass it on now to my live thoughts on the whole thing. And there it is. And like I said, I, I don't know if I'm going to continue this or not. Um, I haven't decided yet. It might be worth experimenting a bit more. Uh, I don't know. You know, the whole detail setup and sort of maybe try to imagine uh, the fire. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't hate it. I'm just not sure if I want to continue or not. Mm -hmm.